Hello everyone and welcome to the third tutorial in this series. In the previous tutorials we set up the scene for stylization and now is the time where the stylization begins. So we're transforming this shot here into something that closely resembles the color key that we have been given. So let's get started. The first thing that I do when I approach this is to add a key light. As you can see there's already a light in this scene somewhere this directional light, but it's a little bit in an odd spot. And the problem with directional lights is that whenever they are creating uh, shadow maps, the shadow map resolution that you enter, so if we go here, the shadow map resolution, this gets distributed along all the elements in the scene. So basically these 512 pixels are distributed from the far back of this polygon all the way to the far back of this polygon. And this is unfortunately like that in Maya and there's not an easy way to change that, especially because we don't have access to the source code. So a better way to work instead of using directional lights in order to stylize is to work with spotlights because we have better control of the shadow maps. So if we create here a spotlight and there's a spotlight and place this accordingly in the scene. So the advantage of spotlights compared to directional lights is that the shadow map resolution here, this one, gets distributed only along the spotlight. So you will have very sharp and very high res shadows wherever you place this spotlight. So let's say um, putting here the spotlight on this rubbish bin here. You see that the 512 get distributed along the spot, so we have a clear cast shadow here. If I were to change this to a directional light, this would be a whole different story. You see some chunky shadow here, but this is too, too detailed to be considered in the 512 pixels that the directional light has. Let's change this back to spotlight and place that in our scene. I'm gonna just make this bigger so that it's easier to see. And the best way to go about this is to view what the spotlight is viewing. So for that you middle mouse click and drag to the viewport and now our camera is actually the spotlight. Now you will notice that because the scene is very big there's gonna be a lot of jittering within polygons. Now thankfully this is easy to repair. So we come here and we need to check the camera shape. This is basically the, the camera that is attached to the spotlight to see what we're seeing here. And we'll change this from one to 10,000. And as you can see now we have no jittering and this is just a normal camera. So let's find our characters. Our characters are over here. I just select them, press F to focus the camera or the view. And then I'm gonna place the light. So as we can see here, it's a light, a very soft light for sure, uh, with exception for these rim lights. But as you can see, it kind of like goes from the center and really spreads along the characters. So we're trying to achieve something similar to this. So let's select our camera again, or rather our spotlight, which we're going to rename to key light. And first of all, we're going to modify the cone angle. And we're going to add some penumbra to it as well. And if we notice here, light spreads a bit more on this side than on this side. So let's try to emulate that like this. All right, I'm going to leave the intensity at one by default, because if you go further than one, it can give some weird yellowish coloration to the materials, which we don't want. So let's view things from our camera again. So we can see here the light is affecting the character here and a little bit here, but we need to modify the materials because this won't be enough to achieve this kind of look. Look development in MNPRX is more material based than light based, simply because for non photorealistic styles to achieve a certain look only with lights without any sort of uh, compositing afterwards is very tricky and we're trying to do everything in viewport here to highlight most of the tools that MNPRX has. So now that we have this here, we need to modify our characters and their materials. 
So to do this, we're going to use a new tool that is now included with the Indie and Studio licenses that is called the Bulk Attribute. What the Bulk Attribute is, is a tool that allows you to easily modify many materials at once. Like usually when you want to modify a material, you need to select the material, go here to Matte, and then modify some attributes of the material. So for example, I'm putting the Kangianti to 3. But you can imagine that for scenes with many elements and many materials, doing this on every single material can be quite tedious. So that's why the bulk attribute comes into play. Here we can just simply select the materials that are in the scene, the hair as well, and this guy as well. And all of the attributes that you saw here previously are now condensed into this one, into this window. So this allows us to easily set up attributes for all of them. So by default, these attributes are populated by whatever you have selected. So depending on what you have selected, you're going to see different settings. This happens because the auto materials is checked. So whatever you have selected, it's going to check for its materials. If you disable this, you won't see anything when you select objects, but only when you select their materials. So we can do the same thing without auto materials, just select the different materials in the scene and just click on matte and then we see the attributes populate here in this window. So it depends on your workflow, you can work with auto materials or not. As well, if you want to save the selection that you have here, you can untick auto refresh and then you can still continue modifying the material attributes without it changing depending on whatever you select. So just keep that in mind. There's the auto refresh. In case you want to handle everything manually, you can always simply, for example, we select these two objects here and then with auto materials, we refresh. That way we have the materials of these two elements. Or we can have the material of this one. So you can either do it automatically with auto refresh and auto materials or completely manual by clicking on the refresh button. So let's get started. Let's select some materials. The hair is also important. There we go. Now I have auto materials here and what I like to do is I just disable selection highlight. Now even though we have disabled selection highlight you might notice that there's some traces of the selection on the material. So keep that in mind that it's not going to be perfect unfortunately. As you can see once I deselect this goes away. So let's get started. We're gonna select all the different materials. By the way, I just shift click on the objects so that we can have them selected. The hair is already selected, the material. You don't need to select all of the objects of the material, just one object that shares the material is enough. So for example, I'm not selecting this because this already shares the material with the pants, so it's not really necessary. Once I have that, I'm gonna disable auto materials and I'm gonna work with their materials. And so basically I wanna save this material selection. So I'm gonna untick auto refresh. Let's get started. Cangiante modifies how the color shifts towards a brighter hue. Now all of these different attributes, remember, they're all very well documented. And this can easily be found if you go to MNPRX here in the shelf. The browser will open and in here you can go to the Uber materials in the documentation and you will find all of the different attributes here and what exactly they do. So for example the Cangiante and here you can see what this is actually doing. And if you want to easily search upon each attribute just go to the table of contents and let's say you want to see what the shading attributes within shading does. And here you can see shading defines the amount of shading within the material. Zero will be flat shading, entirely unlit, one will be shaded. It's the opposite of diffuse factor and won't affect lighting from light maps. These materials are quite powerful, allow you to do a lot of things, but with power there's also a lot of complexity involved. So make sure in case you're not sure what an attribute does, just check the documentation. All right, let's get started with this. Kangiante wrap allows us to define how much the Kangiante should wrap around objects. And notice that we can move the slider. We can go beyond the values that these sliders give. And there's two ways to do that. You either enter a custom value here, 
or you can use this scroll in your mouse to go beyond as well. So you can see here we're adding Cangiante and going beyond one and the slider will adjust accordingly to whatever new values you have. So keep that in mind as well. For now I'm gonna keep this to one. Light and light wrap allow you to define a kind of like a custom light per object on the lit areas. So if you have a specific lighting set on a scene, uh, but you still want to have a different light on an object, you can use this light attribute to do that. And the color that's gonna have is the light color. Just keep in mind that this changes the material itself, the color of the material. So if you have something textured, it's gonna acquire this color instead. So for the light color, since we have here a very yellowish kind of scene, we're gonna address that as well here with a light color. We're gonna add a very pastel yellow. And once we enable light here and we go with a light wrap a little bit beyond, you can see what the effect is. So we're giving it this light color to all the materials there. This is not necessarily what you want, but it's there. Just keep in mind that when modifying light with textures, you tend to lose the detail within textures. That's why the texture preset has a light set to zero. Now what we want here is however to have some color shading. In order to achieve this uh, shading that goes towards this kind of orange, we need to define some sort of uh, custom shading for it. We could also try to add kind of like an ambient light that gives this kind of orange hue. That's another way to go about it. There's many ways to go about it. We're just gonna follow one that keeps our lighting set up as simple as possible and tries to handle most of the lighting with the materials instead. As you can see, the bulk attribute tool is extremely powerful for complex shots. Now we're gonna stop the video here because the next part is just gonna be me playing around with all of these attributes and trying to get as close as possible to the reference color key. But for that, you don't need to watch me at normal speed. So we're gonna speed that process up and with a few breaks for me to explain what I'm doing. All right, everyone, see you in the next video and don't forget to subscribe in order to stay updated on everything we do here at Artineering.